Welcome back to my Excel for Scientists tutorial series. Today we're going to be talking about how to visualize your data within Excel. If you want to walk through all of this with me, you can use the link below in the description to download these files so you can walk through these with me just like it's a course. And you can also use a link in the description to download my Excel cheat sheet that's going to walk you through how to create all of these um, visualizations as well um, in an easy PDF that's completely free to download as well. So to get started today, we're going to work through how to make a bar chart, a group bar chart. And again, we're going to be working on the same type of data looking at um, mental disorder prevalence in different countries. So in this piece of data, we're tracking the prevalence of depression over the years. So what I want to know is basically how does this actually look through the years instead of having to look at it as numbers. So again, we're going to highlight the data that we want to make a table of, come up here and do insert. And there are two of these that look like bar charts, but there's only actually one that is a bar chart. And so in this, this is a column or bar chart. This is the one we want. If we do this, this is a histogram. So this is going to take all this data and try and create a statistical view of it. And you can still use this. So if we do this, this looks like nothing because we, our data is, it's only pulling the data in years. It's not even caring about this because we can't feed multiple things with into that type of bar chart. So instead, we're gonna go into insert and we're going to come up here and we're just going to do a 2D column. So why does this look weird? There's a reason for it and it's because it's pulling in the data incorrectly. So our horizontal axis, it's just doing a number one through 28 and our vertical axis is mainly just has the years on it. So it's just slowly increasing over time, showing that the years are basically increasing over time. So what we want to do is come up here to select data and we're going to edit this and we're just going to add in the years. So again, this is going to make our horizontal axis actually the year it's supposed to be. And we're going to click OK. So now what we want to do is get rid of this series one because this series one is just the years. So if we remove this series one, now we're actually seeing the prevalence of it through time. So delete our chart title again. We can delete this legend again because we only have one thing on here. And then we do need to add in axes titles. So I'm just going to do year. And up here, I'm going to do depression prevalence in percentage. So now we can see that initially there was a decline from 1990 to about the mid 1990s. Then there was a incline in or an increase in the depression prevalence up to about 2006, 2007. It decreased a little bit and then started picking back up. And so that's a really quick way to be able to show your data. Again, wait for my next video and I'm actually going to show you how to make this look much more publication quality. The other thing I do want to show you is on your X axis, you can see down here is 4.55%. So this allows us to really see a clear view of this, but it can be somewhat misleading. It could look like the prevalence in 2017 is double the prevalence in 1990. And that's not actually true because it's only 4.65 to 4.85. So if we want this to look a little bit more accurate, we would click on our axis and then it's going to bring up this format axis over here. And what we would want to do is set this to zero and press enter. And so now we can see that the overall change has actually been very slight. We can see that there's a slightly bigger change here and then it slightly goes up a little bit more. But even that, like if you looked at, if we made this any smaller, it would literally just look like almost a straight line with maybe a little bitty bump in the middle. And so if you are doing this, you wanna make sure that you're very correctly showing it and explaining it. So you could have this and then you could have a second graph that looked like it did before with this as the auto axis. So if we reset it with it looking like this to show more the, the changes, but then to make it realistic that 
these changes are actually really minute in total. So that's how to create a bar chart. But what if we wanted to see multiple different prevalences over this time? So if we come into our group bar chart, we're going to look at the prevalences of different disorders through different decades. So 1990, 2000, and 2010. So we're going to highlight all of this. We're going to come up to data, insert, sorry, not data, insert, come up here and we're going to do a bar chart. And obviously this is not pulling this data in correctly. And again, we're just going to come up here and hit select data. So what I want my access to be is we're actually gonna have our access as the different um, disorders. And then our series one, two, and three. So these are going to be each of the different um, years. So in this way, there'd be two different ways to fix it. If we don't want to recreate our chart, we can actually come in here and fix it through each of these. So in series one, we can hit edit. We can have our series name is equal to the first one in it. And then the values are equal to all of these and then we're gonna hit okay. So you can see this is di disappearing and that's because all you can see right now are the years. So we're gonna do this again, edit this guy, and then bring in this, okay, and edit, just do both. So bring in these as the values and up here we wanna bring in this as the year name. So now we have a much more appropriate bar chart. So now the question is, what if you didn't want to go through and do that? What if you had like so many different series that you didn't want to go through and do all of that individually? So instead what we would do is do this and come up here and do insert, insert a bar chart. So then now, that now created that, but now we don't have series names. This is probably the much faster way to do it anyways. So now we don't have these series names. So what we would want to do is hit select data. And what we could do is just hit edit and type in the name here. But if we want to make sure that this stays dynamic, we can just click and add in the names like this. Edit, series, edit, and then click on your name. And okay, so now we have the exact same chart created two slightly different ways. And let's delete our chart title. So again, what we would want to do is add in access titles. So this title probably doesn't need to be added in because this is obviously pretty self-explanatory. And over here, we would want to add in depression or um, prevalence. Spelling is not my strong suit, guys, of that. We don't want to give it a specific name because it's the prevalence of different disorders. So we can see by far anxiety had the highest prevalence overall throughout the different years, but we can also start seeing trends between decades. So we can see that depression kind of increased from 1990 to 2000. The highest of anxiety prevalence was during the 2000s and eating disorders have consistently increased over time where alcohol use disorders have decreased mainly between 1990 and 2000. So this is just some general um, ways to visualize this data. So finally, I wanna show you how to do error bars. And the way to do error bars is the exact same no matter what the type of plot you're using is. I'm going to actually create a bar plot real, or yeah, a bar chart graph real quick. So just including um, these uh, different disorders and their average prevalence. So I'm going to come insert. We're going to do a bar graph. There we go. So that created it really simply. We can remove that um, and add the access title over here and just say um, prevalence percentage. So this is really nice. We have our averages, but what if we actually want to know, is depression really that different than anxiety or is it just the averages are different? So we want to see what's the variance within the population. 
So if we're going to do that, what we need to do is add error bars onto this. And if you are in science, almost all of your charts are going to have error bars on it. So we're going to come up here, add chart elements, and we're going to click on this error bars. And what you can see is now all of these error bars are the exact same height, despite what is going on. Um, and that's just not realistic. So what we want to do is now click on this. And so what it's pulling is the standard error. Well, all we've given it is averages, so it can't really find the standard error. Instead, what we need to do is tell it what, it's, what the standard deviations are. So we're going to click custom and specify value. And then we can come in here and we're going to give it the exact same for both the positive and negative. So it does allow you to change it on the positive and negative if you want to. So now for the depression bar, it's going to bring in this number, but for our anxiety bar, it's going to bring in this number. So if we click OK, now you can see these are all adjusted, right? So these are all much more what we would want to see um, in regards to actually having error bars. And they're a little hard to see. There we go, I made them a little bit better. But they're a little hard to see just because they are so small given the um, you know amount. So we're, we're looking at like nothing's even 0.1 and we're on a scale of eight, um, zero to 8%. So, that's how you would add in error bars onto any um, access that you're interested in looking at. So now a bar chart has a few different characteristics on it that I want to be able to show you. So the first thing we're going to do is one, definitely increase that. I'm gonna bold it and again, I'm gonna make all of this aerial, increase our numbers because this is the thing that probably bothers me most is when I can't actually read what you're trying to have me read. Um, <clears throat> Ariel, come down here, bump up that, make that Ariel as well. Okay, so, and I usually bold all of my axes information. That seems a little comically big now. So there we go, that's a little bit better. And I'm also gonna move this away from the axis a little bit better. I think it's a little too close. Come down here again, we're gonna make all of this aerial, come up and bolt. Maybe up another, there we go. So now this is starting to get better. We're also gonna move this onto the graph. If you look at most legends, they're actually on the graph and not off of it. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove these lines. There we go. So this is already starting to look a lot better. So now what I want to do is I want to come over here and on this line or on this axis, I want to have its line. So I want a solid line. I want to make sure that that line is black and I'm going to put it up to one point. So now you can see I have a solid line here and I'm going to do the exact same thing down here. Come over here. I'm going to add a solid line, make sure it's black, and put it up to one point. So now I have this. If you want it to be a box and not just um, it on the two axes where you have data, you can click on this internal plot area and it's going to bring this up and you, where it says border, you can do solid line, make sure it matches both of those. So now I actually have the box around it and not just that. You can also see that this is a gray. So I'm gonna come up here and make that black. There we go. And I think this is also a gray. So I'm gonna come up here and make that black as well. Here we go. So now we're starting to look a little bit better. Um, this, it's doing it by ones. I don't know if we really need it by ones. So let's do it by twos. And so how we're gonna do that, we click on the axis, it brings this up. These are the bounds I talked about in the previous video, but if I wanted to you know, make it from five to that, I can do that and now I'm only seeing anxiety. So I can reset it. And so now the units is going to be those differences. 
So now what I want is to make them 2.0. So now I've gotten rid of it. So that's starting to look a lot more. What I also would like is to have probably some tick marks. So I want them outside coming off. There we go. That makes it look a little bit better and I might even add them on this axis as well. So go under tick marks. Um, and then we're going to have them outside. And so those are going in between and I don't want. So we can see our minor tick marks are the ones that are actually coming out the center. Our major are the ones that are coming in between. And so we don't want the major, we only want the minor. There we go. So now we have this, this is a little bit better. I might actually increase that legend a little more, bring it a little bit more in. Okay. So now two more things are still really bothering me about this. And these is all related to the bars. So I can always move this in or out um, and change things around if I want to change the dimensions of it, just to let you know. So if you need to have a graph that meets a certain dimension, you can do that to make it a little bit better. But now what I'm wanting is for these to be much more publication quality. So I do not like these colors. So I'm going to do blue. Let's do red and um, let's do green. So if you know anything about colorblindness, again, this is probably not gonna be good for that. So we also want to change the pattern here. So I'm gonna click on this again, come to pattern filled, and I'm going to actually make all of these either solid or lined. So I'm gonna come over here, come to pattern filled. I'm gonna make these, mm, let's make sure they're all going the same direction. That's a little bit thicker. Let's make them, there we go, a little bit deeper. And then we have solid. So now this is starting to look quite a bit better. Um, this color is not really easily differentiable um, right now. So let's like make it a little bit more bluey. Eh, that's too light. So let's make that, there we go. That makes it a little bit more blue. So now, and besides the fact that this looks like peppermint and that looks like Christmas, you can pick you know, slightly different colors or maybe make this one red instead and then make the other one blue might also be a good way to do it so that the reds aren't so close. Um, you can also just do this with varying degrees of gray. So let's show that real quick. So I have gray, really, let's do the darker gray on that one. And then this can be black. So you can definitely change it up, whatever you're feeling. But then what I would definitely do is add a border to these guys. This just looks weird, um, just being honest. So add a solid line border, make sure it's a black border. Um, and 0 0.75 to one is usually a good width. So come down here, do a solid line border. Make sure it's black and over here, solid line border. Okay, so now I'm moving that. This again, I don't think this, is this actually black? There we go. So now this, you probably could not tell me that this came from Excel if you just looked at it. You, it doesn't look specifically like it's an Excel type, um, a thing this could easily be a publishable. Maybe make that guy a little bit bigger. These guys just a little bit bigger. But yeah, I mean, this looks like something that I would see in a publication. And I can easily save this. Oh, always click on the outside when you're trying to save it. I could easily save this as a picture. And I'm just gonna do bar chart, save. So now here, if I come into this, 
And the important thing is if I scroll really far into this, this is not really all that pixelated, right? It actually still looks pretty good um, if I scroll into it, right? Like it's pretty high quality. Increasing the size of your text is really helpful to make it a better quality. If I scroll all the way down to 500, now you're starting to see that pixelation come in. But for a publication quality, this is generally pretty good um, to actually have a publication quality. And I believe that you can change the output of your uh, pictures. And I might have a video coming on my channel soon showing you how to do that. But this is a generally a good publication quality bar. I hope this video was helpful and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.